Um, last year, we started our summer series. Unfortunately, we couldn't do anything about it, but we had to start our summer series with all of us online. Because you may or may not remember that a tropical storm was coming, and it looked to be pretty intense at the time. Um, as a lot of them are, it wasn't quite as intense as we thought. It did spawn a tornado here in town, so it was that. But uh, for that reason, we all sat at home and looked on TV. And uh, uh, James over here, who had, uh, had not taught in that way before, was, was like, here we go. <laughs> uh, but uh, tonight, um, I'm excited that uh, he gets to be with us uh, in person. Um, it has been my uh, a great pleasure to uh, be Buster's friend for, for quite a few years. Uh, he is the minister of the Jacksonville Beach Church of Christ, a proud father of Eden, Jimmy, and Warner. Warner is in uh, class tonight uh, with Charlotte. He is a rare native of Florida, raised right here in Jacksonville. He's been in ministry full-time for 16 years, serving as both a youth and family minister as well as pulpit minister. He holds a degree from Harding University in Bible and Religion. In his spare time, he enjoys fishing, baseball, and yes, as many of us with sadness say, the Jacksonville Jaguars. <laughs> right there with you, buddy. Pray for you. Come bring it to us, brother. <laughs> Watch your stuff back there. <laughs> Good evening, Mandarin. Good evening. God is good. Oh, All the time. I like this amen section over here. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy to be with you guys tonight. I remember uh, a year ago, it was crazy. Uh, Y'all got hit by COVID. We got hit by COVID. The storm was coming through. Zoom was coming out. And... Um, uh, but it's, it's nice to finally be here with you. And I, I can't think of a better topic to talk about uh, over the course of the summer than prayer. You know, the, the world that we live in right now is, is in turmoil. And uh, I think that this is just a very timely series and I, I commend y'all for, for this subject. Um, if you've got your Bible, will you turn with me to John chapter 17, John 17. Now, growing up, my father frequently told wild stories. Um, uh, some of those stories were scary stories. Um, however, there was always a, a, a bit of truth to it, but we didn't know how much of it was truth, you know? And, and one story he told me was a story about this monster that lived on State Road 11. If you, um, if you go south towards uh, St. Augustine, Florida, um, instead of going towards St. Augustine, you cut a right towards Bunnell. And in between Bunnell and Deland, Florida, there's a stretch of, I don't know, 30 miles or so. And it's really dense woods. I, I think it's called State Road 11. But our family would travel this road a lot. And, and my dad told a story of how he went down that road one day and he saw this monster in the woods. And of course, we were kids hearing this story. You know, he said this, this monster had horns and he had these big shoulders and he was scary and all this kind of stuff. And, and he would tell this to us over and over and over as we would travel through these woods. And over the course of time, though, we, we got older and it just got ridiculous. <laughs> well, years later, years go by, find myself older and I'm traveling that road by myself and heading down that way to go fishing. As I'm traveling there at nighttime, I look in front of me and I see this creature. <laughs> and it's got horns and it's got these big shoulders. It's got these big eyes and I could see it right there. And I said, nobody is going to believe this. <laughs> Nobody's going to believe what I'm seeing. All those stories that my dad told me over the years are right here in front of me. I said, I'm going to find out. I pulled up, pulled up, pulled up, and it was a big cow. Now, <laughs> apparently there's a cattle farm near there, and they get out from time to time. 
Now, I'm saying that story for a reason. I think that all of us have experienced some things that are so wild, so big, that we just want somebody to see it. We want somebody to experience it with, it, with us. You know, that you may not have a creature like that in the woods, but you may have seen some sort of world wonder, some sort of uh, uh, geographical feature, something that, that was so big. You, you said, I just wish that I could see this with mom. I just wish I could have this loved one with me to where they could see, where they could experience what I am experiencing right now. It's God that big. I just want others to see what I see. I just want my loved ones to see the beauty in him. This is the essence. This is the spirit that Jesus prays in John chapter 17. Let's dive into John chapter 17, begin, beginning in verse 1. <clears throat> After Jesus said this, he looked toward heaven and prayed, Father, the time has come. Glorify your son that your son may glorify you. You granted him authority over all people that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I have brought you glory on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. You know, over and over throughout the Gospel of John, um, uh, Jesus gets asked to do various different things. And, and one of the common phrases that Jesus uses is this phrase, my time has not yet come. You see that in John chapter 2 with the miracle at Cana. You remember when Jesus turns the water to wine? They come to, to Jesus and they say, Jesus, they're out of wine. Do something. And his response was, dear mother, dear woman, why do you bother me? My time has not yet come. Well, over the course of time, uh, this changes. And it changes here in John chapter 17. John chapter 17, uh, it says, as Jesus begins to pray, he says, Father, the time has come. Glorify your son so that your son may glorify you. The time has come. Glorify your son. The word glorify, um, it's a really churchy word, isn't it? Glorify, you know? Um, what does glorify literally mean? It means to, to render something glorious, to render something majestic, divine, to give proper weight to something. So Jesus says here in this text, Father, render your son, not to say that he's not glorious already, but render your son to these folks glorious, Show these people the proper weight. Show them the divinity, the majesty of your son. Now, if Jesus stopped there, it would sound like a modern day prayer, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <Yep>. Right? <laughs> it, are, isn't that kind of how a modern day prayer is? Most often, uh, most prayers today that are offered are offered so people will render us glorious. <laughs> Right? How oftentimes have, have we heard you know, somebody pray, get me this job, get me this promotion, get me, get me, get me to where I look glorious to others. Do all these things for me to where I am glorified before other people. But Jesus doesn't stop there in this prayer. Jesus prays, Father, glorify me so that I may glorify you. I may glorify you. 
His number one goal in this, this, this moment wasn't to overturn the government. It wasn't for him to be treated fairly. His number one goal was that the father be glorified, that the father be rendered, rendered glorious to the people around him. His goal was for people to be in awe of the father. You know, several years ago, I, I was, I say several, uh, a few years ago, I was in South Florida. Um, and I was part of a men's group down there. And uh, this was a, a wonderful men's group that I, I, I miss to this very day. And we'd get together once a week over a meal. And as we'd get together for this meal, we would have a scripture reading. We would have a few questions uh, that we would we'd ask one another. We'd have a, a time of prayer. And uh, it was just a, a wonderful group. And there was, there was one guy in this group that I really connected with. I connected with him for a host of reasons. He was a young father. I'm a young father. But he also had melanoma. And I had melanoma. And he and I, we, uh, we just kind of connected, you know, just natural, natural connection. But he shared about this, and he shared about what had happened. And, and we, just, we just got to praying about it. And, and week after week, we'd come together, and we'd have this time of prayer, and we'd present this situation with melanoma before the father and week after week he would get sicker and sicker he got skinnier and skinnier the melanoma the cancer was spreading one afternoon as we are there and we're we're praying he stopped the guys in this group and he says let's quit praying like this so let's pray that God is glorified in this. We got quiet. He said, pray that either God is most glorified in this melanoma being taken away, or that God is most glorified by my children seeing my faith and the comfort that the Father provides in the face of death. Pray that either this is removed or that my children see the comfort that God provides in the face of death. Pray that he'll be most glorified one way or another. It's a hard prayer. Jesus prays similar in the garden. Father, I want you to be rendered glorious. Render me glorious. He doesn't... Hey, stop this. Stop this unfair treatment that I'm receiving. Father, render me glory so that you are glorified. How much would our prayer life change if we started praying like Jesus prayed? We started wanting the glory of God rather than what we want. How much would our churches be transformed? What we sought was the glory of God instead of our own wants and desires. Go on to verse six. He says, I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I have given them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I am praying for the world. But I am, excuse me. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given, those you have given me, uh, for they are yours. All I have is yours and all you have is mine. And glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, world and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. 
While I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe. By that name you gave me, none has been lost except the one to destruction, so that scripture would be fulfilled. I am coming to you now, but I say these things while I am still in the world, so that the world may have the full measure of my joy within them. I have given them your world, your word, and the world has hated them, for they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. You know, having three children, um, I thought for the longest time that the hardest day of, 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 for a parent was taking those children to kindergarten. You know, it is a scary day, isn't it? It's a hard day, you know, because you, you bring them to school and you, and, and you don't know what they're going to encounter and they're leaving that safety net at the home and all these different things and you just worry about them as they're going to school. But this past year, we moved last year, around this time we moved, came back to Florida from Georgia. My daughter is going over to Fletcher and uh, that was scary. <clears throat> she didn't have any friends at the school. There's other kids at church who are in a similar grade, but they don't go to that school. And I'm watching her as, as she's going in and I'm just terrified for her, you know, not knowing anybody. You know, uh, any loving parent knows what it's like to release that child somewhere, don't we? It's a scary thing you worry about and you think about they're going off to college or whatever. Here in this text, you can see similar feelings in Jesus. Jesus knows that he is returning to the father and he begins to pray, pray, pray for his children. Jesus says, Father, these children who you gave me, I'm, I'm kind of paraphrasing this, okay? I revealed you to them. These children who you have given me have obeyed your word, and they have come to know you. They've come to know with certainty that I'm from you. This whole time, Father, I have protected them. I have shielded them, but the world has hated them. I'm coming to you, but they're going to remain Father, they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. You can't be there with them on the first day of school. You can hear the, this, this call of this, this loving father. Going further, verse 17. He says, sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify myself, that they too may be truly sanctified. Jesus says, sanctify my disciples by your truth. And then he says, thy word is truth. Now, if you're reading this in the Greek, it would literally say this. Sanctify them or transform them by your truth, the logos of you. Okay, that's kind of tricky. The logos of you, the word of you. And that's just, if these people, if these people see me glorified, they'll be transformed, sanctify them, transform them by you, by the word of truth, by me, by seeing me glorified, sanctify them, transform them so that they'll be able to hang on. You know, several years ago, I was having a real hard time in my faith, and uh, I am thankful to uh, brothers like Mike and Sandy in that time. You know, your life is falling apart, and uh, you pray all sorts of prayers, but it doesn't seem like God's answering any of your prayers. Praying in one room of my house, and I'm just praying, God, I want to see you. I can't see you. Praying for all these various different issues that are going on, and, and I'm not seeing any answers. God, I, I want to see you. I want to see you. Not seeing any answers. Are you even out there? I want to see you. As I'm in this prayer, one of my children come up to me. 
And they said, Daddy, read. Read, read, Daddy. I've got my eyes closed. Keep praying again. God, I can't see you. Child comes up again. Daddy, read, read, read. Go somewhere. I'm about serious business now. All right. I'm praying this. Child comes up, they take their finger and they jam it in my eyes. And they say, eyes. Now they probably ask me to open my eyes. I stop praying. I think it to myself, God, I'm wanting to see you. I'm wanting to see you. This child says, eyes, open your eyes. I look at this little child. I think about what God has given me. And I'm just in awe. Awe. As I I look at this child, I, I look at what he's given me despite me. And then I think about what he gave me despite me in Jesus. And it's just, you're just in awe. And once, once we, 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 we just start really thinking about who Jesus is, what he's done, whenever we're sitting there and just, just sitting there in his presence, everything else, everything else seems strangely dim. I think they wrote a song like that, didn't they? All right, turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face. And the things of this world will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Jesus says, sanctify them. Thy word is truth. If we just see who he is, we'll be able to hang on in a world that so oftentimes hates us. Go on to verse 20. I'm going too long, Mike, let me know. Okay. <laughs> he goes on, he says, my prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory you gave me, but they that they may be one as we are one, I and them and you and me. May they be brought to complete unity to let the world know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Oftentimes we think uh, about prayer that it's something that, that God answers for us, right? Um, we always think about God answering prayer. However, when you look here in John chapter 17, we see that we are an answer to prayer. This is one prayer that we can answer for Jesus. And so oftentimes we get upset when Jesus doesn't answer our prayers, but are we answering his prayers? Do we split hairs over nothing? Are we making mountains out of molehills? Unity among Christians is how the world sees the glory of God. This is how the world comes to know him. How the world uh, uh, renders him glorious through the unity of Christians. You know, um, if I was to ask you who the king of the jungle is, um, what, what would you say? What? The lion, right? The lion. I don't know if there's any truth to this or not, but I was just, just reading something uh, about this the other day. The lion's really not the toughest animal out there. It's not. The tiger. The tiger can whoop a lion. I know, because I, 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 I listen to the experts on YouTube. Okay. <laughs> 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 no, a, a tiger can whoop a lion, not because... Uh, 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 or, uh, a lion, lions will always beat tigers, not because they're the stronger animals, because they work in a pack. They work together. Tiger, the tiger, he thinks about what he wants, what he wants to do. And this is what Jesus is kind of getting at. You know, if you're united, if you're united, then the world will see me. 
If you, if, if you, you come together and the world will see who I am. Everything about Jesus, everything about Jesus is about seeing the glory of the Father. He says, glorify me so that the Father will be glorified. See me. See me. Look at me. The world hates you. The world is going to hate you. All right? Look at me. Sanctify them by your truth. Like the word is truth. Then he, here he, he says, he says, my prayer is that, that you'll be one so that what? The world will see the Father. Everything about Jesus is about the glory of the Father. You know, uh, going back to that road trip on State Road 11, you know, uh, I've told a few people that story because it was so wild. I told you guys that, that story because it was so wild. But Jesus was willing to die on a cross to show us, to tell us about the splendor of our Lord, giving his son. Are we about his glory or our own grocery list? Are we about seeing him? Are we about his mission being one so that the world will see his glory? Sometimes we, we gotta let things go for the glory of God. Sometimes we, we've got to bite our lip for the glory of God. Sometimes we, we got to be meek, not have our way for the glory of God. It's a hard thing. But when the world sees the glory of God, the world is transformed. Let's go to God and pray. Father, you are beautiful. You are beautiful in your love for us. You would give us your son, your one and only son. How may we see how beautiful you are. Father, may our lives point to you, point to the calm you give. May our lives bear testimony to you. May our actions reflect you. May we encourage as you encourage. Father, your son tells us that he has revealed himself and that he will continue to do that. Father, show us more and more the beauty of your son to where we glorify you in all things. Father, thank you for the hope that we have in him and through him. Thank you, Father, for, for making us one through the righteousness that was given to us by Jesus Christ. It's in your son's name we all pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Buster. Thank, thank you, everybody, you. for being here tonight. Thank you. <laughs>